There is not much uh, need to introduce Jerry. Everybody knows him. So, Jerry, over to you. Okay, Anand. Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, thank you so much, everybody, for taking your time um, on a Saturday <laughs> to share and learn the knowledge. So, this is a small um, talk around OKR because uh, I think recent time, fortunately or unfortunately, uh, a lot of Agile coaches have shown and um, jumped into the OKR um, area and there's a lot of traction around that. So I just wanted to put my thoughts around that um, and uh, also look at what does that mean for an Agile coach? What does that mean beyond Agile um, specifically to OKR and related thing? And this is my interpretation and my way of looking at this stuff. Um, so maybe it could be a little different from whatever uh, interpretation or style of okay or how you do that. Second point, I'm not uh, expertized in this area. It is still uh, learning in progress. So there could be my way of doing work could be a little off track and uh, I'm perfectly okay with that. The third point, I purposefully made it pretty simple, uh, very, very simple. Uh, and uh, one of the thing I wanted to do is, um, is a small individual OKR activity at the end of, before the end of this session. And so it's planned for a 60 minutes. Uh, so a little bit of theory and then jump into creating individual okay for each one of us who are in this call because it's a good time to do at the end of the year see what we wanted to do something on 2021 with that um, so a quick introduction about me i'm jerry i'm based out of bangalore and uh, been here for the last two decades and been working as an agile coach and um, currently I work as an agile coach with uh, Wells Fargo. Okay, so that, um, let me start. If you have any question, uh, feel free to put it in the chat window at any point in time or unmute and uh, ask your question. But I wanted to make this a little more engaging. So when I ask a question, I will pass. Um, you have to take your time to type in or uh, feel free to mute and answer. So KR, again, we all know it is objectives and key results. Uh, we are not going to get into the theory, uh, the history part from where does it start at and all of those. I'm sure most of you are aware of it. Um, so I just want to uh, put the definition OKR or a technique that help Companies define, align, and drive business resilience and results at market speed. So, when you talk about OKR, or um, how does that, in your opinion, do you think it is different from traditional organizational measurement criteria like SMART goal or strategy or whatever? In your opinion, why do you think we need OKR? Any thoughts around that? Yes, sir. Jerry, this is Balaji here. Uh, one thought is that uh, uh, when we have when okay when we have a program and a portfolio, every every portfolio comes with a vision. So probably if we have an objective, probably an organization, enterprise as a system has an amalgamation of the portfolio goals. Like everything need to resonate, uh, resonate well, right? So from that perspective, having an uh, objective and how are we going to measure that particular uh, on what parameters or dimensions we are going to measure it. Probably we are actually defining the success criteria there to, to some kind of a thing. Thank you. Any other thoughts? 
hello yes go on. yeah hi this is alok uh, so what i have understood is basically okay as it says objectives and key results it can be applied in any situation where where we are trying to achieve a goal the it's basically an approach in which you divide your goal into objectives and pro- progress towards it in a in a like by breaking it down into small small chunks and and pivoting wherever it is needed so when you ask the question where we can apply i think it can be applied in any any context at least what i know but i'll be happy to know if there are specific contexts in which it is more applicable and mm-hmm. there are contexts in which it is not applicable so if you can share that it will be helpful yeah okay so it is uh it is i'm not i'm talking about the application but my question is why why do you need okr okay that's my, what i wanted to focus okay. on that. yes yeah okay so shall i share my view on this or like yes yes this? yes okay. yes so what i have understood from uh, like this, i actually uh, from it is based on the book the measure what matters where basically i understood this topic and maybe i am not 100% uh, correct in my recalling but basically why we need this is that sometimes we have a vision and a goal uh, which okay uh, in which a lot of uh, things can happen in between like for example i'll take an analogy uh, maybe let's say you're playing a football game right and you want to win that's the goal but then how you're going to win this needs to be strategized or broken down into small parts and, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, like for example you need to train every day for this much time right to, to maintain your fitness then uh, like if you are not able to stand in the football for 90 ground for 90 minutes then first of all you are not achieving even that goal so clearly you have to do that and similarly there can be more further goals about your diets and other things so uh, we need this because goals are too big and too big sometimes and and difficult to uh, difficult to track and monitor uh, if we don't follow a proper method to to achieve the goals which look very large mm-hmm. maybe that's why okay okay that's a good one thank you so much and also i see the notes the, the chat it says uh, okay i'll help in alignment and uh, setting expectation across all levels and amongst all stakeholders connect strategy to execution good points so in the, in the slide which you are seeing here uh, so one of the thing you need to remember um, a full and fast alignment and accountability are essential for the business results so if you look at this picture um, the high accountability on the x axis and the high alignment on the y axis what is the important thing is in an organizational context uh, in a business context where delivery is important where shareholder um, share share price is important customer volume base everything is important that the, when when the management comes into picture then the question or the importance of accountability and alignment is critical because if you look at this here the accountability c suit won something some the senior management won as part and uh, the execution level people won something so how are you going to bring the alignment and accountability together because if they are not aligned when when you are, when you don't have that uh, fast and complete alignment and accountability Uh, happening together in an organizational context probably that is where i could say the okr plays a vital role because one of the important thing you also need to understand in an organizational context um we make not we the organization and the decision makers make so uh, needs to make so many decisions right every day they need to make lots of decision and those decisions drive the business resilience and how are you going to help them in an aligned and accountable way so that is the uh, important thing i was we just wanted to highlight uh, from this 
perspective and if i move to the next one so okay ar inspire alignment and empower accountability to help the organization grow its fastest when done well because when there is so in terms of the objectives and the key results <clears throat> anyone disagree to this statement so it helps you to set the okrs right at the first time and you can help the organization fluently quickly adapt and figure out how they wanted to achieve it so now <clears throat> if you look at um, from an organization perspective if you look at an organization that should be alignment accountability achievement innovation and speed uh these are all from if i take from an organizational side and if you look at from the people side then uh, for this five things i can relate to the purpose purpose of a uh, purpose from the people side i can make it to the alignment and accountability with the clarity achievement using gratitude gratification innovation using inspiration and the speed with enthusiasm so by having the okr uh, if you are able to inspire the alignment and empower the accountability the organization helps the organization to grow fast when you are able to map the objectives and the key results um let me um, also quickly look at the chat okay so that is about uh, the meeting someone want us to join so let's look at as you say okay r stands for objectives and key results let's look at um what is that mean let's what is objectives mean so the objective here is to provide clarity on the intent and direction so when you set the objectives it should provide clarity on the intent and direction so objectives should communicate three to five things five you want to achieve uh, in the upcoming quarter uh, there's a spelling mistake it's for next quarter for example identify two or three for the q1 2021 the objectives should declare the big idea and the why objectives are not there to give the numbers that is not a good objectives objectives should inspire and motivate people with sense of purpose so that they can so they so so they want to be on board and other important point is the objectives may have long or short span so you know in a nutshell what do you want to accomplish and why is it important there's a one there's a one question you need to ask for the objectives and also if someone else read the objectives will it inform the choices so what kind of objectives you have come across have you come across an objective which talks about why or it is not talking about why this objective is just focusing on the numbers what are the kind of objectives you have seen you have come across or or what are what kind of objectives are assigned to you are given to you can someone share some insights yeah one of the example one of the example which comes to my mind is uh, even when we do a pa planning let's say for one of the client when we did a when we did a pa planning that 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 pa objective is actually a subset of the epic level objective and that epic level objective is actually comes from the investment themes for example in the rally as a tool for each and every objective for each and every epic we actually used to map the investment theme which actually comes from the enterprise business capability mapping 
So what are we trying to tell is that even a PI objective is somewhere getting connected or parented to the organization level KPIs. So there is a purpose behind an EPIC and a purpose behind a PI and everything is been tied or parented to somewhere in the organization KPI at a portfolio level. Uh, okay. I know that I'm, yeah, uh, I know that I'm talking that no, just talking the theory part, but then I'm just giving the clarity that uh, no, how are it is getting connected and parented. Okay, so yes, um, I do. Uh, yeah, the, the points you have said is good. But one of the things I would like to again and again reiterate that if we try to attach everything to Agile, if you try to attach everything to portfolio, if you try to attach everything to program, if you try to attach everything to Jira or Rally or everything we look at from an Agile lens, I think we might miss the bigger picture. Because at least in my opinion, OKR has got nothing to do with Agile. It is much bigger. So, uh, it is an organizational business tool, in my opinion. Or I can use this as a personal tool. But when I start looking all of them through the Agile lens, um, it, it, it become a bias. It become too much of bias. Uh, and I do understand, I do agree, we are all Agile coaches, we live in that illusion. Um, but I think it is also important for us to take a step back and uh, see things beyond the Agile lens. So look at from, uh, because everything we try to navigate through the program, portfolio, um, through the Jira, through the rally, uh, are we missing the bigger picture? That's a question I would like to ask everybody. I mean, it's not pointing out to anyone. Um, so, because when we, uh, it is like, you know, the, the blinders, uh, one of the coaches used to give a beautiful example. We put the agile blinders and, and uh, I can, I, I, what I'm saying that is I can see this a lot, even in the LinkedIn. Um, people say, oh, I, I, what do I going to do tomorrow? I put all of that in the sticky and put it in my fridge. Okay, I'm agile. It's a human nature. Don't need to relate that with agile. Similarly, let's keep OKR as OKR. Um, yes, because uh, then the reason I'm saying that is uh, we might miss the bigger purpose. We might miss to drive a business initiative as an agile coach if you look everything through the agile lens. Okay, so that's that's my request. But um, what you have said is also makes sense. Um, but Think beyond the portfolio, think beyond the program. Because then we need to get into the questioning of where do you need portfolio? Where do you need program? Where do you need that um, breaking down of that? Can we look at the objectives? Is that objectives cannot be made in a, in a different context? So these are the other questions I encourage all of you to challenge and look at. But Hi, Jerry. I have a question here. Yes, go ahead. So, when thinking about objective, you see one objective of every company is to maximize the company value, right? That's the top objective and all the activities, programs are being done to achieve it, right? So, it can be which are sub-levels. So, but how should one define a good objective? So, the like thing is... Uh, the, the point is that that is that statement you have made itself is an assumption. We don't know. There are organizations think beyond making revenue. There are organizations think beyond making social impact, right? So we cannot make it generalized. But but if there is a business entity, let's say I'm saying value. So I'm not saying revenue. I'm not saying profits value so even if it's a non-profit they must have defined that there is some value that they are creating and even if it's a profit then that value can be monetary but ultimately it is the value so the otherwise the organization is, will not exist right so the question is that is what defined in the why 
right okay so you need to you, see this is this is a webinar so you need to keep things generic but when you talk about concrete measure you then you know in that organizational context you need to ask so there are okay our coaches um you can see quite a few of them um in the market nowadays um so setting up the okr is is where something you work with those decision makers the executive team or the leadership team and helping them to understand the why behind the objective so i so all i'm saying is think from that perspective think in your organizational context in your own organization tomorrow assume that your leadership team the senior vice president or the cto or the or the business unit head asked you to run a okr session uh, how do you help them to define the objectives yeah that makes sense yeah yeah so that is the reason i said uh, again in the in the webinar discussion this is work by there are people from different organization come into picture so we cannot make it a generic thing we can only talk in a generic way that's the reason i said when we uh, think about it take out the agile blinders and think from a think as a business person think as a decision maker okay uh, okay one second uh, so one of the example which comes to my mind is let's say for a for a for a company the particular objective is to improve the customer satisfaction score or it could be the brand value so let's say let's say for example let us assume for now this is the uh, objective uh, which a particular company uh, say a retail company or a healthcare company is actually trying to embark upon so plausibly if if i am going to if, if uh, we are going to define increasing the brand value could be an objective then based on the brand value we may need to come up with the what needs to be measured and then how to measure and uh, and yeah. what kind of a strategy can be done can yeah yeah, yeah. I, i agree uh, i okay if you wait for another uh, few minutes uh, i think the next next slide uh, you do have a simple example which is again a software specific so just just wait for a few more so at this point i just have one question uh, Hello. Oh yeah, before that, uh, who are not speaking? Can you please you all go mute? No. Specific. Yeah. Oh, who are not speaking? If you can make yourself muted. will be great okay now i'll do one thing i'll mute everybody so if you they want to speak please unmute and uh, uh, and then please sir so, i had a question ashutosh sir yeah yeah so i started my career long time back in a marketing firm and that time we did have a yearly plan and then we did have quarterly plans and targets so how is this okr different from that approach i mean is it just a new term which has come in the market or because i feel that every one of us who started our career did uh, have these objectives on a quarterly basis right which we had to attain and if not attain there were some discussions which used to happen so how is this different from that kind of a planning so i am not able to do that comparison because i have never done that kind of a traditional uh, goals and other settings so i'm not able to do that and again i don't think that is the purpose we wanted to achieve which is better or which is not better um at every given point in time there is something pops up and on which is purely based on that market uh, pushes us to your wall and find a better way there's nothing called in my opinion there's nothing called okay are is greater than smart goals it is just a wall so over a period of time and uh, we can always defend and say oh that one that way of quarterly planning was much better maybe in that particular context yes if it is much better in that organizational context that's perfectly fine but the whole thing of okr i think it was pretty popular was how they probably in in where the okr evolved or if you uh, go by the history in that organizational context in that set of decision makers Uh, in that kind of a cultural environment they could able to have a better accountability and alignment 
and maybe by setting up OKRs, uh, the organizations might be able to um, come out of a better business plan, maybe able to get more revenue. And uh, uh, if the reason why in the recent times it is, it's again my opinion, because I've seen quite a bit of the things as a more positive result is uh, the traditional way of doing um, yearly planning, three year planning, big uh, with having a deep packet of money to throw a lot of investment and see the result after one year. Uh, those kind of the things are being gone after 2008 global economic recession and now it is more of very conservative, not conservative, more calculative planning and fund allocation. So probably we may have to look at a yeah, better approach. And then I think that's one of the trigger in reason for um, coming up to this kind of a care approach. I, that's my assumption. So um, it's, it's, I, I'm not a person wanted to do that comparison, which is better and other thing. It is in that particular context, in my context, in my engagement with, the, with my customers, what is that they feel or they think it's a better option? Can I help them as a coach? So that's, what, that's the way I wanted to look at and that's the way I would like to set my objectives and define the key results. Okay, so let me continue the next one. So we, we try to do, uh, discuss uh, quite a few around what is objectives and other term. Now let's uh, look at the KR, which is the key results. Um, so the key results are the outcome by which the success is measured. So four to six results that quantify the success for each objective in that time period that is more important because it is driven by time boxing, right? Um, the key results define the best possible results, not most probable. So don't expect that um, you have a 100% uh, achievement you get it from this. The key results uh, where you will focus the effort because it creates the most value. <clears throat> and key results are the numbers, quantifying and end state. Key results are not the action items or opinion. They are results. That is the most important thing. And having a balanced key results help to achieve the right outcome. So another question we might like to ask is, what would be the great thing? What will you have more or less of if you accomplish the objectives? So you have an um, objective and you also identify certain key results for the each objectives. So there is some of the, um, the chat window, there are quite a few things about output, outcome, objectives, key results. So the output is not equal to outcome that we all know. Output is the tasks we do, but outcome is the value we create. Again, this is how uh, the definition goes from the OKR perspective. Okay, I just wanted to highlight that outcome is not equal to outcome and output are the task, but outcome is the value we create. So let me just show this. Um, can you, Jerry, can you, sorry to interrupt, can you please give the example like when you say output is the task and outcome is the value? Can you give a concrete example to understand this? So the output is the short term things what we do, but outcome could be the end result. If you take a, for example, if you wanted to explain a football match, hmm. the outcome is whether the team A won or the team B won, but the output could be the number of goals each team scored. 
Okay. So let's say you create some output, you may not achieve any outcome. That is, or may achieve outcome, but that is not favorable. Let's say. It is possible. It is. It is possible that uh, you create. A, um, you you come up with lots of output, but you may not be able to achieve the outcome. This definition. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For example. Uh, <laughs> Are you working as an agile coach or uh, the agile agile world? Uh, no, I'm not an agile coach actually. So I'm okay. Sorry. So if I give an example of using the word velocity, are you able to make it out? Yeah, I think speed of doing task. Right. Think, so yeah. a lot of time, if you are just keep focusing on our, our our example, for example, if you are just focusing on putting the pushing the team to just do the daily scrum review, retrospective planning, all of those um, stuff, telling them to do the Jira updates, does not make your team or an individual having the agile mindset. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, if, if you put it from the agile, uh, if you put the agile blinders, then um, the whole way of being uh, agile is an outcome. If I say that, then uh, doing those things the right way are the outputs. So you may have to do um, the incremental success or the in incremental steps, which are the outputs uh, in the right way, keeping the bigger picture of the outcome which both are aligned okay yeah thank you yeah helps so the example what you are seeing is um <clears throat> the example what you are seeing here is uh, one of the example on the left hand side we can we can define OKRs like that. Nobody is going to challenge you, but the right side is what it's uh, the the better way of writing it. I don't use the word the best way, but the better way of doing it. So this is where we say, if you remember, when you talk of the objectives, um, numbers are not important. So the objective is make DigiPay. Assume DigiPay is an app the team is developing delightfully fast for our, our customer. That is the objective. You can say ship DigiPay version 1.6. Yes, but the objective should be more meaningful. Um, any of the slides I will share with the, um, the people and they should be able to send it to all of you for your reference. So we look at to reach the right hand side, uh, make DigiPay or whatever the app uh, we're developing delightfully fast for our customer and how we are going to achieve that reduce. So they are the key results. Reduce four user steps in DigiPay transaction flow. Cut transaction processing time from six seconds to three seconds. Users see zero seconds of spinning wheel in transaction flow. <clears throat> so um, the minimum average users and all those stuff. So this is very specific to the product and uh, some of the things, but what is more important is uh, it, that numbers, when you talk about key results, that numbers matters a lot. You need to have very specific. That is what more important. You cannot say cut transaction processing time minimal. You need to say what is the current one and where do you want to go? So again, as I said, um, you can use the left side. Nobody is going to challenge you, but writing it in the right way is more optimal and more better. Any um, quick question on this? This is example of objective, right? And the bullet points are basically sub objectives. Can we say that? No, the first one you are seeing the green tick, that is uh, your objectives. And how are you going to achieve that objectives are through these key results. Okay. So key results, 
are synonymous with outputs or is it uh, slightly so, different? Yeah. So your key results should quantify the success. And you also need to define what was that result. So here we want to make, so this is our objective, make our product more. Here we want to make it fast for our customers. And how are we going to achieve it? By increasing or reducing the processing time from six seconds to three seconds. And we wanted to, we don't want to see that spinning wheel. Maybe we can, let's not get into discussion about zero second as possible or not. You can change the numbers are just an example. But my key results are very clearly achievable and it is measurable. That is more important. And increase of MAU from 32% to 40%. Or increase of uh, customer base from 100,000 to 300,000. But your key results should be very clearly defined with numbers, not ambiguous. Okay, so these key results, like just to clarify, I'm sorry, I'm taking a few minutes, but uh, so I the green one is the objective, the, the bullets are the key results, but then when I think about it, it also looks to me as uh, outputs, which you explained just now, like, so is it correct thinking or is it? Uh, yeah, the key yes. results are, okay, okay, fine. I just wanted to make sure I understood correctly, yeah. Okay. So when you're doing your uh, OKR, um, there are five principles. Um, I just want to touch upon that and then we'll quickly do a small exercise uh, after that. Okay. Um, so the first principle is aspire and inspire. So with using with the, with the use of OKR, the aim is to organize for great. So the OKR should have an aspiration and an inspiration. So that's the first principle uh, when you're planning to define the OKRs. And the second principle is radical clarity is an accelerant. Why this is important second principle is the time lost because of the absence of clarity uh, is a loss of time. We'll, and as you know, in an organizational contest, there are n number of decisions you have to make every day. And we, we need to use those decisions the right way and we need them to add up to the growth of the organization. So clarity, uh, having a clarity of the from a OKR perspective is an acceleration to achieve the result. And the third one is fast and focused pace. It, it, is, it is hard to innovate and operation, oper, operationalize fast if we iterate and manage the things slow. So you need to have the things fast, but at the same time focused. So defining OKRs quarterly and uh, having an attention to those weekly create a more focused and an incremental outcome. And if you are going to design your OKRs quarterly, it helps you to iterate and it helps you to build a learning and adaptiveness in the organization or the business. So you can, uh, again, that doesn't mean, can I have an OKR for one year? You can, you can, but at least see, can I have a one big OKR for a one year? Can I break down into a next set of OKR at the quarterly level and see, can I see, can I measure and see, are we achieving it or not? Because the whole purpose is to uh, set objectives, see the key result, and then decide and change your decision and the flow and the direction based on the result. And the fourth principle is localized and transparent. <clears throat> so 
So make sure your uh, OKRs are uh, localized and the progress of the OKR is transparent to everyone, every team uh, and every person who is involved. We can have the um, objective set at a corporate head office level, but figure it out if that is going to be addressed by different distributed team and you can maybe need to break down that into a localized version. So what does that mean is again, it promote a decentralized approach as long as you have the alignment and accountability in place. So remember that picture I have put it, accountability and uh, um, alignment. So that is the important thing. And the fifth principle is teams are the engine of value creation. So OKR help the team to clarify what they are trying to achieve and how it is aligned with company success and how they know as a team it is those work they are doing are successful. So the OKRs are not individual goals. And also we need to acknowledge that it takes a team to uh, <clears throat> drive the outcome and it is a learning process and it is evolving. So these are the five principles from OKR. Um, aspire and inspire, radical clarity in uh, is an acceleration, fast and focused pace, localized and transparent. Teams are the engine of value creation. So another thing is um, you don't need to uh, go beyond everything what you read in the internet or whatever things it assumed to be the best practices. Yes, uh, it is a normal human nature uh, to be obsessed with um, these big brands and say, oh, Google follows OKR or Intel followed OKR. So, it should be followed in my organization, not necessary. Or it should be followed the same way in my organization, not necessary. Why? And that is Google by my company is my company. What is more important is what measure <clears throat> and why are we measuring it? And what is the reason you are measuring it? And using those things you measured, what is that you are going to do about it? These are some of the things you need to ask in your organizational context to define a better OKR. And uh, you, can, you can measure, one, give me two minutes, you can measure the results. If you think, no, I'm, I'm, I don't think I can measure my results, then we need to figure out what can we measure them. And most importantly, uh, one person key results are not a other person objective. That is not the focus. So keep these things in mind. And uh, from that perspective, see how you can bring the OKR in your organizational context. Yeah. Someone was about to ask something. Yeah, about this last line where you mentioned one person's key result is not other person's objective related to that i guess so in the previous example where you were saying digi payment our goal is to make it let's say faster for every for our customers yeah. right and then there were certain key results so yeah. uh that is so, the entire group result <clears throat> yeah that's Steve. so that's the objective of the entire team and then it was divided into that these are the key results through which we will measure how much successful we have been able to achieve our goal, right? Yeah. Uh, so now I want to, let's say, break it further down. As you mentioned, there can be organizational goal and it has to be broken down. So just taking that example only, let's say the top line, the top key result for there was that we will reduce the number of clicks from six to, let's say, two. So that is kind of a result. So will that become a sub-objective for, let's say, some people or how, how do we, uh, like, the, in my mind, these key results look like if you want to break it down further, uh, that these key results become objective now. 
or is it a wrong understanding and uh, see again, it depends on different parameters how we were organizational structured <clears throat> how the decision making how it is departmentalist departmentalist and all of those come into picture right <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get you. Sorry, can you please repeat what you said? So I said it again depends on um, how in your organizational context, how this is structured, how they define that uh, OKR, how the whole thing is being done. So there are many other parameters also we need to look at. Okay. But, I mean, my idea was that when we are basically, when we there is an objective and we have defined the key results and mm. now we want to further break it down. Uh, like because there can be or get a business unit objective and your team is a small part of it. There are many teams in that business unit. So let's say I'm looking at my business unit's objective and then I want to define objectives for myself. Will we derive from the key results of the business unit level let's, or? Let's, let's, let's do one thing. Let's try to, um, <clears throat> there's the next exercise I wanted all of you to give a try. Let's create a self personal uh, OKR and see how it goes. Sure. And let's yeah. see learn from that. Right? Yeah, okay, sure. Because what I said is, it is not a, um, a best practice. Uh, they're not uh, one person KR is not other person objective is uh, is not a best practice. Uh, uh, but maybe many organization follows perfectly fine. What you're trying to do is you're trying to create a dependency and you're also trying to make uh, creating more and more depend dependency might lead to delay and also might lead to create a lot of friction and conflict and uh, politics and power center issues. So um, <clears throat> when in, in your organizational context, when you create concrete OKRs, you may have to look at, are we creating a chain of uh, thing and does that work? I may not be able to answer that. Only thing is you need to try in your context, maybe see the result of the OKR for the first quarter. Uh, so the whole thing, uh, what happened here is when you are working, when you're defining a OKR, uh, so you send, uh, you, it's like your sprint, uh, you uh, planning, you do a OKR planning meeting, which takes, uh, for example, for a quarter means three months, so it is almost 12 weeks, right? So for our 12 weeks, you may spend a week time to help the organization, all the people to defend the OKR. And then the next 10 weeks, we implement and see the results from the OKR. And then we also do a OKR retrospective, same like your sprint retrospective. Then you can see, you know what, this time we have too many interconnected KRs and uh, there is a delay and most of the KRs in those particular style we cannot be able to achieve. I think maybe probably you may have to look at um, standalone or, or not so connected OKRs or KRs and then try to improve. So the OKR also go through similar like a, a, a sprinting cycle, it goes through the cycle, so that's called the OKR cycle. I, I haven't put all of that over here um, because it's the last slide I added. So, uh, okay, there's also the reason as I started, I said, um, many of the agile coaches nowadays include OKR because of the inspector and adopt nature. So you can, if you're planning for a release, planning for a quarter, you can also bring in OKR and along with your other retrospective, we can bring the OKRs and also see how can we improve in the next cycle. So that is about the OKR cycle and as a coach, how you are going to help in your organizational context. So let me stop here. Um, the, my purpose wanted to bring a little bit of clarity around the objectives and key result. And as I said, um, the next uh, five minutes, um, our next five to seven minutes, let's try to do a one quick uh, exercise. Um, so with your, uh, whatever the last 40 minutes, whatever you heard, I wanted you to try a personal OKR exercise. So here's the context. Here is not the context, here's the, here is the context. Here in the last week, year or month of the year. So it is good to have um, 
my request is prepare two OKRs, two objectives and certain key results, or at least one and some key results, which you wanted to define for yourself and which you wanted to achieve at least by Q1 2021. Identify one objective and to achieve that objective, at least three to four key results. I wanted to keep yourself as your personal things, right? And uh, I also want to encourage you to, uh, I'm going to try a time boxing for um, three minutes. After that, I want at least one or two people to share their uh, OKRs. Is that okay? Let me set the timer. Three minutes. Let's see how it goes. The question is personal objective for next Q1, right? 2021. Yes. With whatever the learning you had, try to create one objective and four to six key result to achieve that objective. Uh, Jerry, in the meantime, uh, sorry, yeah. uh, actually, uh, you were trying to explain something like uh, uh, why why this, this topic becomes more relevance for an agile coach, right? Can you just uh, touch upon that point kindly once again? I just missed it. Somewhere you are trying to tell when we do your release planning also, we can bring in this, okay, uh, I could not get it fully. Uh, Okay, so that one, the quick thing is, uh, recent time, a lot of coaches started um, engaging in the OKR, probably because of the inspect and adapt nature, and we can set um, time boxed results, key results, and also inspect and adapt, which is also built within the uh, OKR cycle. Okay. Because, yeah, because instead of having a one-year goal and see are we achieving it or not, it helps you to define quarterly. Right, so this is something a lot of coaches prefer. Agile coaches are more passionate about uh, short iterative cycle and all those stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Jerry. One quick question. Yes. Should uh, OKR be necessary or essential? Still, if I have KPIs or balance scorecard or MBOs. On top of it, should it need to be mandatory? <laughs> okay. So the balance scorecard was for a purpose. KPAs are for a purpose. Where do you want to put everything rather than sticking to one? No, okay, sir, come recently. But yeah. I've been asked to follow by my organization for quite some time long, and I've been following that, and it is going perfectly fine with me and with the organization. Then most should I need to go for work Okay. So it is an organization decision to choose what they want to achieve, follow, right? So what is the benefit of going over in work okay. It's a good question in your organization, the decision maker should tell you. See, the one thing you need to uh, uh, understand that these are all, there are, there are N ways, N ways to measure, N ways to uh, bring business outcome better. But there's nothing uh, was superior than the other one. Even today, organization goes for CMM level five certification. Even today, people go for, uh, so there is no more CMI level 5 certification. It's been... Approved. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is uh, organizations mm -hmm. still keep that and they publish as part of the organizational achievement, right? They don't take it out because the organization moved to Agile. Even today, there are so many people get certified. No, CMI itself has refined to CMI 2000, mm -hmm. not to CMI. Hey, what, what I mean to say is it's a structured process to follow. <laughs> That's my point. Similarly, what I'm saying is even today, there are agile coaches go for program management certification. Even today, it's one of the very popular certification globally. Because there, there, is, a, there is a context, there is a, there is a, a, re, a context behind each thing. 
So uh, in your organizational context, in the organizational decision makers wanted you to follow scorecard and OKR and uh, smart goal and KPIs. Um, probably they have a reason only they can able to validate. Uh, they may, they were only able to justify that reason. No, as an agile coach, if we want to go in line with the industry standards, then we have to follow the current trend, not the previous one. So that being the case, what is the speciality over here for me to get buy-in from my management to follow OKRs? The question is, uh, there is nothing called industry standard. But none of the no organization can make it mandatory, mandate that OKR is the only way to achieve it. Right? And um, as an agile coach, you are there to support the organization and work with them to understand why they made certain decision in that certain way at this point, and then slowly start influencing and helping them to change. And that's what I said, because it worked in Google doesn't mean that it worked in, in, in my company. Because it worked in, uh, um, what is it called? Um, the Netflix, it was going to work in my company. Netflix does not guarantee 99.9999 percentage of time, but banks needs to give that up time. If, if Netflix goes down for one hour, it doesn't matter. But if, if, you, if you work in a bank and the bank uh, transaction system goes for one hour, for example, yesterday, RBA imposed, a, 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 I don't know, the ban on HTFC ban not to sell anymore because there was an outage of the credit card and that uh, digital thing. It became a big issue. It hit the share market uh, price of HDFC Bank. So business context is the key. Without knowing that it is very difficult to uh, justify or, or say this is the right approach. Yes, going from a one year planning to a three months planning definitely brings uh, out a better value. To agree, um, but again, is the organization and their current structure and their current way of doing business and the thought process is aligned or not is something only you know because you you, you, know, you are working in a uh, different organizational structure and you know the context much better. So see the benefit of all that if required, do a SWOT analysis of all the three, present it back, and try to get more insight and help them to make a um, mindful decision or help them to make an informed decision. And then see as a coach, how you can support that journey. That's what my take on that. Let me um, pass it here. Um, and is there anybody, we almost crossed five minutes, uh, like to share their goal? Are the OKRs? Hi, Jerry. Yeah. Can I share? Okay. Yes, please go ahead. So, and, and again, uh, when somebody is going to share their OKR, it is not for debate, it is more for sharing. So, other people, please listen. Okay, because it is okay. that person individual thing. So, only he or she knows the context from which he or she is writing it out. Okay, yes, please go ahead. Okay, so I have taken the objective from my personal life. So my objective for Q1 is that I want to develop six packs apps, right? And uh, in in the three to six, four months I have, and this will be measured. The key results for this will be, uh, uh, or, or let's say I want to be more, uh, uh, more feel more healthier towards the six packs apps. And this will be measured through these key results that I'm able to, run every day four kilometers that's one of the Good. second is i'm able to uh, wake up and sleep i mean i have a sleep cycle of eight hours for rest mm -hmm. i'm i'm having uh, this much grams of protein every day and this much grams of carbohydrates mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. uh, and similarly a few more things which can be about uh, 
I mean, it's about diet, exercise, and rest. These are the three things I I, I focused on. My so and uh, yes, it will be measured through this thing. Like initially, maybe I will uh, not be able to run four kilometers. So, but four kilometer is one one key result that will impact. Then uh, being able to do a cycling for these many minutes continuously but, that is another but, that kind of results i have in mind that okay. so yeah that's good but just one uh, one only one small thing uh developing six pack is a key result i, I think you already modified it so the object, yeah i realized when i was speaking yeah, that it looks right. like a result yeah, Correct. Yeah. so the objective is um maybe feel and be good and healthy and you wanted to achieve it and maybe running, cycling, carbohydrate, food habits, sleeping, and probably develop that six pack because that's one of the results you wanted to see at the end of quarter one. So wonderful. Thank you so much. And also the uh, good luck for your uh, <laughs> Thank six you. pack at the end of Q1. Okay. I hope. Yeah, thanks. And uh, okay, before we uh, stop it, uh, any one more person like to share? Anyone comfortable to share a personal call? Hi, uh, this is Renju. Please go ahead, yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I would like to uh, put my uh, goal around uh, launching a business idea. So I would like to do that in uh, next year, 2021. Mm -hmm. And I had put down five, uh, as, uh, brought it down into five different objectives. The first one is connect with SMEs and validate the business context, and which I must be doing in, uh, I'm already on it, and I must be targeting on in the month of January. And towards the end of quarter one, I have to complete the business idea conceptualization. Mm -hmm. And by Q2, I, I would like to work on the market sizing, study, and the financial modeling aspect of it. Okay. And Q3, complete the business models and operating model. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the year, I would like to complete the financial because I will, it, it's a it's not like one after other. It is like right. a, many streams will be go in parallel. Yes. And towards the end of the year, I want to complete the financial modeling, secure funding, and the launch idea. Okay, wonderful. So you are okay. Is uh, the objective is for a year, but you are doing certain lot of things in parallel. You don't need to go more deeper, but. Uh, each quarter one result might impact the things happening or the key results of the second quarter, probably, because this is a launching area, financial, market planning, and positioning, a lot of things are in place. Good. Exactly. Thank you. No problem. And I uh, also, I wrote out one more because you said about two objectives, right? Two yes. uh, targets. Go ahead. The other one is to increase the uh, reading. So, as an objective, I would like to read minimum 20 books in 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, to make sure uh, to keep the momentum going. Uh, mm -hmm. Every month, try to read two books in different topics. Okay. So, so that's the second in, one. in that objective, I just wanted to uh, just highlight uh, reading 20 books at the end of uh, next year is one of my key results. Uh, your okay. objective should be why I want to read? That's uh, no. Okay. I thought the objective is increase my reading. Ah, okay. But uh, so the question is increasing your reading is the only objective, or you wanted to gain something beyond that? Ah, uh, okay. I got the point. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good examples. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Because the objective is uh, declare the big idea and why. Inspire and motivate. So yes, increasing reading is a one good thing. But if you wanted to, for example, be expert in this particular area, so I'm going to achieve that by reading so many books. I'm just giving some. Got uh, it. Thank uh, yeah. you. Yeah. Okay then. Um, that's, uh, anyone interested? Uh, last option, or we can stop with this. So uh, I like to share my OKR. So what I have written is like uh, improve myself uh, in the skill set 
to prepare myself uh, by by next quarter uh, to at least submit one uh, white paper uh, in the context i am reading uh, on the specific agile practices so i delivered one white paper last year uh, the last one year but i want to improve that uh, perspective here mm-hmm. i'm trying to prepare myself so that i can deliver something every quarter so that is okay. what the second one is like uh, reducing the working time by 10% to 15% uh, from the current way of working at this point mm-hmm. of time i am at this point of time i'm working slogging almost 14 hours uh, from where, work, uh, from working from home so yeah. i want to reduce that yes. <laughs> that is that's a good that's a very good okay uh, okay <laughs> yeah. good that's it thank you thank you so much um let let me stop here um so um just to circle back um the whole purpose of this is to make this very lightweight and just introduce enough um and not go in specific Uh, and also try to help people to just try it with a, a, a fun exercise of defining a kr uh, from from the personal objective side to get a feel about uh, what they learned in the five to six slides so yeah, maybe you may have a very uh, very specific example question case or a situation you want to go deeper uh, my request is if you want to have that conversation um connect me uh, if you are already connected with linkedin just send me a note we will have a call and we'll go deeper because uh, when you want to give an answer you know, i need to understand the context much better and uh, it's very difficult to do that when we have a, a huge audience um, and it also sometimes we not even appropriate to ask some of the very specific question um, so that's the reason i'm not going in deeper on that part so that's the thing from my side i hope you at least learned a little bit um and hope this uh, will help you and uh, maybe try the same thing from the organization perspective uh, take it to the organizational level and see how you if you want to introduce if there is a support from the organization and see how best you can go with that one 